All right, so <clears throat> here I am in the next stage of this video here, Fine Art by Matt Filio, and uh, I'm showing you how I'm working on a portrait here of a veteran who served in the Gulf War in 91, and I got finished putting down some layers here on his face and his uniform, so now he has kind of an overall flesh tone on his face, and then um, the start of the colors, the values, the tones in his uniform. And I had to switch to my other camera, the other one ran out of juice, um, so now uh, it might be a little harder to hear me here with the uh, condenser mic, but hopefully you can follow along. And I'd just like to show you the next stage in this process. Uh, so now that I have this done, I want to start getting in some of the values in his face and get rid of the flatness of what we have from the previous layer. So to do that, I'm going to take a little bit of glaze, work in a little bit of alizarin crimson and um, a little bit of burnt sienna. We'll mix that layer and see if we can get a nice color here that will work for this. And I'm just going to go in and start filling in up here, blocking this area off corresponding to what I see in my photo reference. Yes, he has green hair, but he won't for much longer. I just used some of my green glaze for the uniform and the hair just to use it up. And you see I'm just filling this in again, not worrying about any gradients or gradation or shading. Just trying to get the overall um, light and dark area of the face. I'm breaking down what I see to just two tones right now. Which would be the tone I'm putting in right now against the previous layer that I put down before. I can see corresponding to the photographic reference it cuts all the way up to the eye. Most of his nose is covered. And then into here as well. A little bit of his eye on this side. fill it in all the way up to here where I got that line started um, so that would be the side of the face by the ear and then there's a nice delineation between the ear and that side of the cheek that's in shadow this facial wrinkle right here we have a little bit of shadow going up into that area down into the side of the neck. And those wonderful wrinkles by the neck, which I guess is this part of the face, part of the character of the face. And then we'll um, add a little on this side as well by his lip and that indentation below the lip where it shows kind of the contour of the chin. Not worrying about the color so much, I just want to get the value and I'm using a tone that's going to work with the overall uh, look of the face. We'll clarify those colors in successive layers later on. But for right now, all I want to do is just get the overall tone, the overall value 
the lights and darks of the whole thing. So we can kind of get some form and dimension to the face. A little bit into the cheek. Now as you work in these glazes, you know, be very careful not to work over the areas you just put down. You see how I got that right up to the edge? And I didn't go over or blend into it. And the reason I did that is because once the paint starts to dry, you want to leave it alone with acrylic. You don't want to go back in and try to blend it um, even a couple minutes later. Um, by that time, it's already started to dry. And if you try to work into it, you'll lift up what you put down and it doesn't usually look too good. It's not to say you can't rectify it, it's just it makes more work for you later on that you'd rather avoid. I like what Bob Ross says when you watch his videos, he'll say, I'm a lazy painter. And it doesn't mean he he's, didn't work hard. I mean, the man made like, what, 30,000 paintings in his lifetime? Uh, he was very prolific, but he didn't want to make more work for himself if he didn't have to. Work smarter, not harder. So anyway, we have some good dimension taking place in the face just from that initial uh, next layer. I mean, this was just one more tone, and it's already really made the face pop. I mean, granted, yeah, it's got a long, long ways to go. This is just the beginning of the painting. Uh, just, just the beginning. Um, but I can tell with this, uh, it's like a road map where I'm going to go next. And so each layer that you put down makes the next layer that much easier. I'll grab a little water here. Okay, let's see what else I need to do. I'm going to add some of this color, waste not, want not, and I'm going to use it right in these brown areas of the uniform. And just add a little overall warmth to it. We'll reintegrate the colors um, from the face into that to give it an overall unity and harmony in the color profile in this painting. And with this next layer, it's just going to get it a little darker, a little richer, and we might as well use it because it's on the palette. So I'm just working my way across and integrating that in. If you notice from the photograph, from the reference, uh, we have to get these brown areas quite a bit darker than the um, green areas. So they need to be darker in value. And since that's the case, um, we definitely want to utilize what we have on the palette for that. Yeah, that's looking better. That's nice. Now, where do I want to go next? The acrylic, you're going to kind of hop around and you're going to work on different things at different times. So while something is drying, you might be working on something else. And uh, while this is drying, I might go and do something in the background. But for now, I'm going to leave off on this segment and hopefully this uh, little tutorial helps you in your own painting adventures and um, helps you to make your portraits more realistic. So hope you enjoyed this and let me know if you have any questions or comments. Uh, leave them in the video for me. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you like this and you can also subscribe to email updates. You can get them sooner than what I can upload here on, on YouTube. Uh, by going to my blog, 
mattfilio.com. So anyway, we'll talk to you soon, and God bless. Enjoy your painting. <laughs>